It's a wound the silver-eyed leader of the pride will never forget. They can smell her tracks. the bush and she's trapped now she must choose north towards the villages and people or south along the fire line to an even more daunting obstacle for her the swollen river in this part of Africa a mother is named after her firstborn as its protector He was always just a little smaller than the other two. Slower. Prone to getting lost. her name as protector of her young. As the smallest, he must get used to being constantly bullied. It'll either build him up or wear him out. Marditown knows the pride will be coming after her, but what lies ahead is terrifying. Lions detest deep, open water. It hides things that seem unnatural to them. But the options behind are worse. If she stays to fight, the male lions will kill her cubs. It's their instinct to wipe the face of the earth clean of the old male's genes. She must make her decision now. The male cub doesn't hesitate this time. He knows to stay close. His sister wades in more cautiously. But the third cub holds back, scared of the water. time the third cub plucks up enough courage, she's become an easy target, both on the land and in the water.
males turned back into their newly won territory, satisfied that she and her cubs have been expelled forever. The silence is a condemnation. Mardita, the protector, has failed for the first time as a mother. As she turns away, she is turning her back on her past, on the pride that was so desperate to be rid of her. And she steps forward into an uncertain future with her two surviving cubs, the little male and his sister. The battle for the territory has been decided. Mardita and her cubs have escaped to an almost deserted island in the swamp. The only lions on this vast, isolated wilderness called Duba, in the middle of the Okavango Delta. Here, the land is plagued by seasonal floods and rivers that weave through it. If it is a refuge for them, it will be a wet one. A few weeks have passed. Food has been scarce, but there are still no signs of other lions, and they're starting to feel safe at last. The smaller cub has gained renewed confidence by being one of just two cubs now. In his heart, he's a hunter, always ready to explore the endless possibilities that lie in wait for a cub with a restless spirit. close call. He may have thought he so nearly notched up his first kill, but that little hunter's heart did skip a small beat today. The cowardly withdrawal by the elephant confirms that there will be another chance, perhaps when he's a bit older. Till today, she had only time to focus on escape and survival. But now she must find a way to get her cubs safely through their first critical year until they can fend for themselves. And as a single mother, this will take every ounce of her energy and intelligence. The fire and march of human settlements to the north have driven other animal refugees towards the island Duba is about to change. These are some of Africa's most aggressive animals. Their sharp horns and bone-crushing bosses are perfect weapons, and their massive numbers give them confidence. At the head of the herd is one of the most fearsome of them, a scar-faced bull weighing almost a ton. For the past few weeks, this has been her island. The arrival of the buffalo brings hope as possible prey, but also fear. These will be her new enemies on the island. Buffalo are not easy prey. They dislike the scent of lions, and they don't hesitate to attack.
for the Cubs, life so far has been a litany of narrow escapes. One long line of enemies out to get them. A strange way to start life as King of the Beasts. With more and more of the newcomers flowing onto her island, Marditau and her cubs are destined to run into them again. The herd's pathfinder is now aware that this island has lions, and from now on, he'll always be on the alert. It will be an almost daily conflict, unavoidable in this open, yet confined space. 